Just a quick video on how you can get your applications that you've created for Android uploaded to Google's Play App Store. Uh, Google's Play App Store is a store where most people get their Android apps. There are other app stores, but this is a great place to get started with. Now, if you are a developer, you will need to have a developer's account with Google Play, and that costs $25. That's it. You never have to pay $25 ever again. Google says that it's to offset people who would be doing spam apps. Not sure if $25 would do that, but that's what they charge. Now, as a frame of reference, Apple charges $99 year over year for having apps deployed to their iTunes App Store. So $25 is a great deal. Once you've actually paid your $25 and you've got your Google account, uh, you want to go to play.google.com slash apps slash publish. And that will actually bring you to your Google Play account. And the first thing is a link which says all applications. And this will actually show you all the applications that you have published or if you are brand new to the account, it'll show you nothing. Um, and you'll have to go ahead and add an application. As you can see, I've got a couple of applications that I've published. And these are ones that I've published um, personally, so they tend to be experimental or little apps I've done for my kids or for um, schools to uh, uh, help with their school training. These are some of the apps that I've created for Android. They're just really fun apps. They're not really the professional apps that I create. I create those on a different account, but this is just a, a fun place to try ideas and experimental code out on. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new application. So to do that, I click on the plus sign where it says add new application. And it's going to ask me what is the name of my application. And in this instance, I'm going to call it Desert Life. And I can either upload the APK file if I've already got one, and hopefully you'll have one. If not, I'm going to go ahead and prepare the store listing, and I'll upload the APK file, which actually has the app at a later time. I'm going to actually go ahead and select prepare store listing. And you'll see that it'll come through, and you'll see there's a little set of check marks which show your progress as you're going through creating your new application. So the first one at the top is your APK, and you can actually set up your APK to either be an alpha testing, beta testing, or production. Uh, alpha testing is if you have some code that is extremely experimental. It's just an idea. A, it may break or crash. Um, and if anybody installs it, it really is at their own jeopardy. You can upload it and then you can share a license key. Beta testing is more stable. Um, again, it's another way of you being able to uh, test and have people use your code in a controlled environment without having to get the unique identifier for their um, device. Production means that the APK file that you create is going to be available to whoever you want to sell and the Google Play App Store. So I'm going to go ahead and click Store Listing, and you'll see that Desert Life has already come through as the title. Now, if I had created this application uh, using PhoneGap or PhoneGap Build, one of the meta fields that you can actually put in your um, XML config file for PhoneGap will actually allow you to put in the description and the title right in for your app. So if you upload the APK file, um, the title and the description would automatically pre-populate. It hasn't in this instance, so we're going to go ahead and create both. Now, for the title, we have up to 30 characters, and for the description, we have up to 4,000 characters. Both of these are used for um, people being able to find your application. So the search engine that will help um, present your application and make it discoverable really relies on the title and description. One of the things that I'd encourage you is that in your description, say what your app does in the very first sentence. A lot of times people won't read past that first sentence. I know for myself that I don't. And just think about when you're installing apps yourself. You'll look at the picture and then you'll look at the very first sentence and the title of the app. And that's how you make a decision often on whether or not you want to install the app. So you go ahead and put in the, uh, the, net, the uh, type of app that you have. And in this one, it, the app is going to be Life in the Desert. And you'll see that uh, we have very limited controls in the uh, window here. Uh, we have, don't have any font formatting. We don't have any bullet points. 
but you can highlight specific features within um, the description. A uh, technique that I use is to use a dash mark for um, bullet points. And so put uh, life in the desert, and then we can put bullet point one, uh, nightlife, finding water, finding food, and you can keep putting in the different bullet points. That makes it really easy for people to be able to read what you have. The next area that you want to do is look at promo text. Now, you can't choose whether or not your app will be promoted by Google in Google Play, but if they do promote your app, it's great to have this section filled out. You have 80 characters, so think of something that's shorter than a tweet and put it in here. And uh, in this case, I'm going to put life in the uh, desert from the, and I can't spell today, from the point of view of the animals. And I just use 57 characters. Following that, I get into my graphic assets, and this is where I get to put in different images. I have a phone image, a 7-inch tablet image, and a 10-inch tablet. Then I have a high-res icon, a feature graphic, and then a promo graphic. You can actually take screenshots from your phone. So if you actually have an Android phone, a 7-inch tablet, and a 10-inch tablet, you can actually take a screenshot if it is running Android uh, 4X or above. Just press the power button and the up uh, volume button on the side, and it will take a screenshot and save it to your camera roll. Um, or you can do what I did is I actually went in and I created all of the images um, using uh, fireworks which I have a creative cloud account and uh, from Adobe and so I get fireworks um, as part of that um, uh, account. Um, the first phone graphic needs to be 480 by 800 pixels. The 7 inch is 600 by 1024 pixels. The 10 inch is 1280 by 800 pixels. Uh, the high res image is 512 pixels by 512 pixels. The feature image is 1024 by 500 pixels. And then the promo image is 180 by 120 pixels. And to add them, I just simply select the gray area and it will say, okay, where do you want these? And I actually have these on my desktop. So here's my phone image. I'll upload that and it's uploading. I can actually go ahead and upload multiple ones. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This is my 7 inch. Here is my 10 inch. And we're going to let those upload. They will take a moment. Now you can add up to 8 images for each of these devices, so phone, 7 inch tablet or 10 inch tablet. Um, you can get as creative as you'd like inside of each of those images. Um, some people just use screenshots from the devices. Uh, I've seen other companies actually put several screenshots into one screenshot and uh, just to get as much information about the device out as possible. Uh, something you do also have to bear in mind is that uh, you need to keep each image has to be underneath a megabyte in size. So if your files are particularly large, you want to make sure that you're using some kind of image compression tool um, that will squeeze out uh, all of the uh, uh, extra information that's normally packed into a image that, that you don't normally need when you're viewing it on a web browser so that it looks as so that the image is as small as possible. We do have a couple of other images that we need to put in. We have a high res icon that has to be 512 pixels by 512 pixels. And I'm just gonna go put one of those in and here is my high res. Let's go upload that image and I'm gonna put in a feature graphic and then put in my final one, which is a promo graphic. So we have all my graphics. One of the other things you can do, and this is really kind of an extra, is that if you have a YouTube video, um, then you can also paste in the link to the YouTube video here. We can get into the categorization of your app. Uh, is it an application or is it a game? Um, if it is a game, um, then you'll see that there's a whole bunch of subcategories that you can make that game part of. If it's an application, there'll be a whole bunch of additional um, categories that you can choose from. Um, in this case, we're going to make it education. 
Then you can select a content rating. I always go for everyone. My apps uh, work for everybody. And then you can put in a website, contact information, and a phone number. Select no for privacy policy because it's a very basic app. And as I go along, I can just hit the save button and it'll actually save anything that I'm working on. Now, if I had forgotten to do something, it'll actually go ahead and prompt me and say, you need to get something done. Now, I know that I've got everything uploaded correctly because I got a little green check mark here, which actually says that everything is good. I'm going to go on to pricing and distribution, which is my next feature. And I'm going to choose whether or not I want this app to be paid or free. Now, um, one of the things you have to bear in mind is that if you choose your app to be paid, you cannot make it free at a later date. And if you choose your app to be free, you cannot choose to make it paid at a later date. And that's the difference between uh, Google Play and the iTunes App Store, where you can actually do that. I'm going to go ahead and make my app free, and it's going to be free permanently. And I want it to be available in all countries that uh, Google supports with the uh, Google Play App Store. And that's pretty much it uh, for what I have. I'm going to hit save. And it says that I've got something missing. So let me go down and see what I've got missing. Oh, content guidelines. Um, let's see now. Um, ah, so this, I can't actually check the um, the uh, content guidelines or US export uh, guidelines until I actually go ahead and upload an APK file. I don't have an APK file, but you could actually, if you did have an APK file, you could upload it and then finish the pricing and distribution. And then you can change from draft to publish, and your app would then be published for anybody to download. It does take about two hours for your app to go from you being um, hitting the publish button to it being available. And what Google will do is they actually have a set of uh, robots that go through and check all of the code, um, making sure that you're not doing anything that's malicious and meets their um, guidelines and criteria. My gut feeling is that Google's gonna start getting more um, aggressive in which apps they allow through. Right now, you can pretty much get anything through, um, which leads to a lot of malware and a lot of problems with existing apps in the App Store. Um, on the other side of the uh, coin, you have Apple, and that can take weeks to get an app approved and can often be quite frustrating when they reject your app. Um, so. With Google, you guarantee your app will get um, published pretty much, um, and uh, you'll be able to see it later on in the day. If you have any questions, just send me an email um, or put a comment in below.